Mother Nature causing high winds and storms to batter the area. Hospitals are feeling the pressure. This past week, more than half the country reported a record number of hospitalizations. It's been a few months since Johnny Heibel suffered from a brain injury. Find out how the community is coming together to raise money for the family. Live in high definition from your news leader, this is Jet 24 Action News at 11. Breaking at 11 tonight, you're looking live at the scene where emergency responders have been moving people out of their homes near the 3100 block of Lakefront Drive. Now, earlier this evening, with the high winds causing so much damage around the region, it's also affecting the lakefront. According to reports from the scene, the water from the shoreline is making its way to the doors of the houses there and causing flooding to the ground floors. Westlake Fire Department and Erie Police have been responding to the scene. According to Westlake Fire Department, national fuel crews are shutting down gas lines to the area. Fire crews did their best to help evacuees, evacuees with getting temporarily resettled. We uh, had a water rescue tech go out and search the, each condo and make sure everyone's out. Once they're out, we took them back to our fire station, which is a warming shelter. And if they did not have uh, residents or family friends to go to, we have the Red Cross assisting us for them to um, have a place to stay. There's no word on when the residents will be allowed to return to their homes. Another fire department was dealing with wind damage in a different way earlier this evening, as were other residents throughout the region. Star Bodie joins us now in the control room with reaction from the Wattsburg Fire Department chief and residents from across Erie. Hi, Star. Good evening, Brian. High winds continuing to sweep through Erie and neighboring counties, and tonight the Wattsburg Fire Department's roof is destroyed, leaving the chief in distress. Gusty and blustery winds sweeping through Wattsburg on Sunday afternoon, leaving the volunteer fire department's roof in pieces. Apparently when the winds and the rain went through, it ripped the complete roof right off our station about 3.15 today. So you can see the damage, it's pretty extensive. 60 volunteers braving the high speed winds by helping clean up the residue and shingles at the fire department. Damage also extending to the social hall across the street and the telecommunications tower. A couple pieces because it's all over. It took out all our towers, all our radio equipment is disabled now because we have no antennas. You can see the tower up there, one of them that's all bent and the other one's bent right in half. Across the region in Meadville, winds impacting homes. That's when a tree smashed a home, leaving its roof in pieces. On Route 18 south of Conneautville, a large tree falling in the roadway, leaving cars blocked off. Dobbins Landing also suffering the storm, leaving some stopping to check out the strong winds. We just stopped for food and gas and everything. Didn't know that it was a uh uh, unnatural weather today, but my hat's been blowing off. For others, I haven't seen waves breaking over walls like this since Hurricane Sandy came up through New York. And as you saw earlier, Dobbins Landing flooding near the Sheraton Bayfront Hotel and those nearby restaurants as well. If those people are planning on going down there, they must be precautious and understanding that these water levels are getting high. Brian will send it back to you in the studio. Thank you, Star. Absolutely. Be safe. Let's check back in with Craig Flint on the weather conditions. Craig. Yeah, so what we're watching now is that west and southwest wind, which uh, the way uh, the geography is, uh, and it's all about angles of geometry with the Lake Erie shoreline, that water being pushed on shore right now. This is uh, a look at our future cast through the rest of the night. It's keeping an eye on the wind gust potential. Wind warnings have been canceled, but they will remain gusty through the night. So we could see gusts 45 miles an hour through the night, even into Monday before wind speeds slowly start to ease off the pedal here uh, as we head through the day on Monday. And here's just a sampling of some of those peak wind gusts today. So Meadville, 65 mile per hour wind gust in Northern Erie County, right near Lake Erie. There was a gust of 62 miles an hour, uh, Avonia, had a 60 mile an hour wind gust. Venango Township, 56 mile an hour wind gust. These are peak winds. The Erie International Airport, uh, 49, 50, 50 miles per hour, but it technically was 49.88. So we'll call it 50. Sager Town, uh, a little bit uh, lower at a 45 mile per hour wind gust. Not quite done yet. We'll talk more about the forecast coming up 
in just a few minutes. Brian, over to you. Thanks, Craig. It was another triple-digit day of new COVID-19 cases in Erie County. The most recent numbers released by the Erie County Department of Health reporting 149 confirmed cases. So far, 59 people have died from COVID-19 in Erie County. 3,227 people have tested positive since March. Throughout the region, Crawford County is reporting a total of 1,039 cases, up 41. Warren County reporting a total of 111, that's up 3. Ashtabula County, 1,543 cases, climbing by 46. And Chautauqua County, New York, 1,297 cases. Across the Commonwealth, the Department of Health website is showing 5,000 199 new cases, which brings the total since March to more than 265,000. The state is also reporting 38 new deaths, bringing that total to over 9,274. This past week, more than half the country reported a record number of hospitalizations. ABC's Andrew Dimbert reports that President Trump is saying a vaccine could be available by April. But his administration is not coordinating with President-elect Joe Biden and his transition team. Cases of COVID-19 are on the rise in almost every state. According to the COVID tracking project, 163,000 cases diagnosed in the past 24 hours, 1,321 new deaths, and more than 69,000 Americans currently hospitalized. The healthcare system feeling the strain. We're trying to find staff. We're trying to get people from other units to help us out. Many days you just yeah. get in your car and cry. Washington's Governor Jay Inslee announcing new restrictions to help slow the spread of the coronavirus. Indoor social gatherings with people from outside your home are prohibited. Outdoor gatherings are limited to no more than five people. Uh, restaurants and bars are closed for indoor service. The city of Armarillo, Texas ordering mobile morgues. There are more patients than there are beds in the hospital. We've even expanded the morgue capacity at the hospitals with a mobile trailer and requested a second trailer while we wait for a portable morgue unit. This is real. On Friday, President Trump predicting Pfizer will soon receive emergency use authorization for its vaccine and says it could be available to the general population by April. But the Trump administration is not working with President-elect Biden's transition team. Dr. Anthony Fauci telling CNN this could be a problem. It's almost like passing a baton in a race. You don't want to stop and then give it to somebody. You want to just essentially keep going. That's what transition is. So it certainly would make things more smoothly if we could do that. President Trump's hand-picked vaccine czar, Monsef Saloui, telling the Financial Times, I hope nothing interferes with Operation Warp Speed. It is a matter of life and death for thousands of people, calling on the White House to allow his team to make contact with Joe Biden. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington, D.C. One man was stabbed in the hand overnight after an argument that started at a local bar. According to Erie City Police, they were called to 20, 2017 East 18th Street around 1230 Sunday morning when they found a 21-year-old male with a stab wound to the hand. Two suspects, a 28-year-old male and 27-year-old female, were arrested and waiting arraignment in the city of Erie Jail. The victim was treated and released. Coming up on Jet 24 Action News at 11, we'll tell you about an initiative by a local organization that is planning to plant over a quarter of a million trees over the next few years. That's after a look at the weather. Craig. Uh, all the wind headlines have been allowed to expire, but it will remain gusty through the night. What's next? The answer in the forecast. Come on.